Welcome to Houston Newsmakers Extra. I'm talking with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, representing the 18th Congressional District. We've been talking about a number of things. When we left off, we were talking about her efforts to try to get gun control and gun safety passed. I want to transition a little bit now to your concerns. What concerns do you have at all about Democrats being able to keep control of the House? This is a very tricky time for Democrats right now. We're going to go back. I want to talk about January 6th as well, the committee. But right now, we've got uh, uh, the inflation, gas prices, stock market, baby formula issues as well, which a lot of people blame the Biden administration for. Whether that's true or not, you realize that that's the kind of that's the image that's out there. What are your concerns about keeping the House going forward and some solutions such as the baby formula issue that's out there right now? You know, we're fighters. Uh, Democrats are fighters for the American people. Uh, while our opponents are Whiners, uh, they are persons who uh, wish to uh, mischaracterize uh, what is happening in America uh, without solutions. And so I would simply say we're fighters with solutions in hand. It was a supply chain uh, that really impacted uh, this issue of the baby formula. And of course, uh, one of the plants shut down because uh, it was not uh, meeting the federal criteria for safety for our babies. Uh, we are beginning manufacturing. We're getting, beginning through the Defense Production Act to deliver. I spoke to the White House yesterday uh, for them to assure me that we would know in Houston when those uh, shipments were coming. I'm pushing for them to come to Houston uh, in the next couple of days and weeks. That's one answer. The next is uh, we are fighting the question of food insecurity or the lack of food with the lower food uh, and fuel costs. And we're working directly with the bill that I support it, spoke about it on the floor of the House to contain some of the fuel costs and not really impacting the industry that is here, but the costs have to be contained and also to work on making sure that farmers can get products uh, quickly to the market. I'm also going to suggest uh, to the administration that with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we begin to help fund community gardens in a more massive way than we've ever done. And so I think our focus is the people, and we're going to continue to drive out uh, legislation that's going to change uh, the uh, focus of America and bring costs down. There's no doubt uh, that uh, we face uh, some challenges because it has been difficult, uh, particularly with uh, the issue of interest rates, which I absolutely oppose the Federal Reserve uh, raising interest rates because I want to see uh, individuals being able to buy homes, buy cars, uh, and working families. And so we're going to look at that. I'm certainly going to express uh, my concern about that being a tool uh, to use to bring down inflation. Let's uh, continue to bring down costs so that our uh, working families can buy the goods that they need. And let's move the supply chain to get those goods to the shelf. By the way, the president did uh, sign, as I indicated, legislation uh, to move that supply chain and to unchoke those ships and to begin to move uh, to get those products uh, to market. Well, clearly the narrative is going to be out there um, and the, the challenge is going to be to change the narrative in the direction you want it to go. One of the narratives that's really broad has been the narrative coming out of the January 6th committee. There's a lot of revelations coming out of that that some of us had not known before. What do you hope to come out of this January 6th committee uh, hearing process? What, what's the end goal for you? I think Americans should realize uh, that we have been comfortable for many, many years. We have this concept called democracy, and we just uh, thought um, that it will operate on its own and it will be part of our lives forever. January 6th showed us uh, that we must be vigilant to protect our democracy because on January 6th, it was on a slippery slope, uh, but it was almost lost. What I learned is that the vice president of the United States, because of the actions of the president of the United States, was 40 feet away from being uh, attacked maliciously and possibly losing his life. The idea of hang Vice President Pence was not just a slogan. It was a potential reality. And the vice president, who was doing his duty, recognized that he had no authority constitutionally on the 12th Amendment or any other, as opposed to the ridiculous analysis of Professor Eastman who obviously knew he was wrong by asking for a pardon, working for Donald Trump, he knew he, he did not have that authority. He is to be commanded, uh, commended for his courage. 
But the president of the United States, through these hearings up to the third hearing, of which I was there for the third hearing, and listening uh, to uh, the judge declare Donald Trump and his allies as clear and present danger to the United States of America. So, but so what I hope the hearings will do is to raise the attention of Americans. I want them to turn to their constitution to know how precious it is and how precious democracy is and that Democrats cherish democracy. Al Gore spoke, um, I believe, uh, in 2000 and presided in 2000 when he lost and took no action, even though uh, some of us objected, took no action to overturn uh, the elections with false electors. He made it clear that he supported the peaceful transfer of government. Now, objections uh, have been heard over the years, but the vice president recognizes that the arguments can be made and that he proceeds to do his job. It is shameful that Donald Trump engaged in what I believe is criminal behavior uh, that would cause uh, the uh, violent attack on the Capitol. And as you saw the powerful statement of Officer Edwards, who was slipping on the blood of officers and herself, was not unconscious. It was a war going on outside, a violent takeover. And it was led by, promoted by, encouraging Americans, who I believe came there thinking they had to fight a war and use every means necessary. And whether it meant the attack on the vice president of the United States, second in command, they were going to do that. How do you not hold a man responsible for that violence, for that potential takeover? I do want to say that Democrats uh, and all of us came back with Republicans to the House after that violence. We committed uh, to doing our job. We did our job with the vice president and chair, the speaker in the chair. We elected Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. And I'd like to put a smile on my face because I was speaker pro tem when we gaveled out at 4 a.m. on January 7th. We did our job. I think Democrats are going to be able to make the case that we're fighters for the American people, that we have solved the problems, that we're coming at it to attack inflation, uh, that we are providing the biggest bipartisan infrastructure bill led by Democrats, and so that there will be the uh, clean water, uh, our roads, highways, parks, um, our pipe systems, all of that is going to be fixed and we're moving on the coastal spine. We passed that bill just a few uh, weeks ago uh, to fix uh, the issue with the Ike Dyke, and I'm pushing for the Senate to pass it. It has not been passed in the Senate. I ask Houstonians to encourage the Senate to pass the Ike Dyke bill that we worked so hard on. I think they will look at Democrats as doing our job, and we'll be reelected uh, in November. Well, you've got a lot going on. I know you're pushing a lot of uh, issues going forward. The narrative is out there with a backdrop of more than 100 people who got elected just this past couple of weeks who are supporters of Donald Trump and the efforts that he made. So that's going to change the dynamic going forward as well. We'll see what happens with that. Congresswoman Jackson Lee, thank you for your time. Safe travels to you. Good luck on all the Juneteenth activities that you're going to be going around to. You've got a full load, and I know uh, we wish you safety as you do that. Safe travels.